in the next uh, part of the lecture, we will see that um, in case of a function of three variables, uh, the gradient vector is uh, still orthogonal, but now to level surfaces rather than to level curves. So first, let me um, give you a little bit of intuition behind um, orthogonality of level curves and the gradient vector. So the uh, statement that I proved rigorously in the first part, so now let, let me explain kind of the, the main idea. So if we have a level curve here, uh, so f of x, y equals some, some constant k, right? So then by definition, if you're moving along this level curve, so if you are kind of, I don't know, so imagine that um, probably, um, I don't know, that you are on a plane and you are driving on a car and there, there is a temperature, different temperature at each point of the plane, right? So and along the given curve, the temperature is fixed to be k right so if say k is probably 30 degrees celsius right so along this curve the temperature is exactly 30 degrees and if you are driving along this curve the temperature is not changing right so um it means that along this curve the temperature is not changing at the same time you know that the gradient is the direction in which the temperature is the uh, rate of change of the temperature is the fastest but uh, i think it's just very natural i mean so that if along this direction the temperature is not changing, then the rate of change should be as um, large as possible if the direction is as far from this, this as possible, so which means it should be perpendicular, right? So in the perpendicular direction, the, um, the temperature, the rate of change of the temperature is the fastest. And in the given direction along the curve, the temperature is not changing. So basically the same logic can be applied to level surfaces, right? So along level surfaces the value of your function of three variables is not changing. So the rate of change is the fastest, should be in the perpendicular direction. So that's the idea. But now let, let me uh, quickly go uh, walk you through the proof of the, this proposition, right? So if you, if you have a three variable function and if you uh, consider its level surface, right? So its level surface given by the, this equation when um, f of x, y, z equals some constant k then uh, look at um, a point on this level surface. And then if you plot the gradient vector at this point, then it is going to be orthogonal to the level surface. Uh, and th this is what it looks like. So, so the blue thing is our level surface. In this case, it's probably like a part of an ellipsoid, but it could be like any level surface. And um, basically, if you at the given point, if you um, compute the gradient vector it's going to be perpendicular to the level surface which essentially means that uh, it is perpendicular to the tangent plane to that level surface or it also means the, the following thing so if you have your level surface like if the, this is your level surface then imagine that the, this is the point and let's say the, this is the point p p0 p0 right um, then suppose that, that that you have any curve that lies on the surface and passes through the given point. So suppose that you have some curve. Then if you plot the gradient vector at the given point, so if this is the gradient vector, then the, this gradient vector should be perpendicular to every curve that um, lies entirely in the surface and passes through the given point. And this is what we are going to, to check now. So the proof of the proposition uh, boils down to verifying the, this fact that the gradient vector is perpendicular to uh, every curve that um, lies on the surface and that passes through the given point. Okay, so that's the idea. Right, so suppose that we have such a curve C, so it lies on our surface S, right, and uh, we're going to describe our curve by uh, parametric equations, so as uh, writing that x is a function of t, y is a function of t, and z is a function of t, right? So as an example of this, um, I don't know. So let, let me give you some, some examples. So let, let's say, um, if say um, my f x, y, z is x squared plus y squared plus z squared, equals one so this is a union sphere okay 
Okay. Now uh, we could have some uh, some kind of a curve that let's say x equals I don't know cosine t cosine of I don't know t square minus one y is sine t uh, cosine of t square minus one and z is sine of t square minus one and now if you compute x square plus y square plus z square i believe that you will get one let me check it um so x square plus y square cosine square t plus n square t is going to be one so it cancels out the remaining thing so x square plus y square which is cosine square of t square minus one plus z square yeah so using the fact that cosine square of anything plus sine square of say alpha also is one so you can get that so this is something like um what we we have here so we have a surface s and some curve on that surface which means that um x y and z should be given by some expressions in t such that if you substitute the, these expressions into the equation for the surface then you will get a correct equality all right so now uh, t naught is going to be um, the, the the given point is going to represent the given point p right and um we also know that our curve c lies on the surface right? so which means that uh, basically it, it means what, what i just told you that if you uh, take the equations for x y and z so expressions in t and substitute into f into the equations for into the equation for the surface then you will get the correct equation right but now we, we can uh, use the chain rule to differentiate this so let, let me show it to you so we have this um, expression right so now we're going to differentiate f with respect to t so how do we differentiate this with respect to t so it's going to be the derivative of f with respect to x times x differentiated with respect to t plus the derivative of f with respect to y times y differentiated with respect to t plus f z z t on the other hand this is constant and the derivative of a constant is zero right, so we will get the this equation and the, the, this is essentially the, the, the same equation only different notation right uh, but then notice that what the, this equation tells us it, it tells us the following thing. if you look at this three uh, items the derivatives of f with respect to x f with respect to y and f with respect to z so this is f x f y f z and then if you look at this dy dz dy dx dt dy dt and dz dt all right so let me just try them as x t y t z t then this equation tells us that the dot product of the, these two vectors is zero yeah but on the other hand the first of them is is really our gradient and the second of them is the tangent vector to the given curve so basically that, that that's it right so the, the rest is just restating the facts right and um basically that's uh, all that there is here right so what we just checked we verified that uh, the gradient vector is perpendicular to the tangent vector to any curve that lies on the surface so which means that it is perpendicular to the surface itself all right so that, that that's all for the second part